Hey, Eastside Dave, you moved over the uh, weekend? Yep, I went from Queens all the way to Brooklyn mm -hmm. uh, on Sunday and yesterday. The reason why I know about that is a listener told me oh. that uh, this listener offered you truck yeah. after truck after truck. You would not take it. And then woke him up Sunday morning to say, yes, I do want it. Uh, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, Fred from Brooklyn had offered it to me, and I didn't want to put him you know, out of his way. But then Pitts comes over to my house to help me move in a, a, Mercury, a Mercury Tracer, which could barely fit you know, four people, let alone a whole uh, apartment. So what did you think Pitts was going to have? Pitts told me he was going to have an SUV, a truck. He kept saying that for An weeks. SUV is not a truck that you can move with. But that's what he told me, and he comes. Well, well, how are you going to move stuff with an SUV? You need a big truck on moving day. All right, but I mean, it, it still was better than a Mercury Tracer. Pitts's automobile is tiny, so at that point, I got nervous, and I did email. How are you going to move a bed with an SUV? Oh, I just left the bed there. We we ordered a new bed, and I just left the bed there because. What uh, did you have worth moving? Um, I had my television. I had the dresser was the big thing. Uh, we have a big kitchen table, some chairs, and a couch. How are you going to get those things in an SUV? you got to have a truck. Well, I figured if you put it in the back of the SUV and maybe kept the SUV door open in the back and tie Pitsy, it. what was it like moving this ham and egger? It was the biggest clusterfuck I've ever experienced in my entire life. I, had a, I never said I had a truck, but I went to his house saying, okay, there's going to be some boxes, it's just going to be some stuff, and then when the, big tr when the SUV gets here, I will help with that. So I get there, and it looks like a fucking bomb went off in his apartment. There's clothes everywhere, wow. DVDs everywhere, dirty dishes, just fucking everything ashtrays full of cigarettes and I'm like Dave what the fuck I didn't come here to pack your shit I came here to move your shit I thought that was implied when you ask someone to move no. I thought they're gonna help you put things in the boxes absolutely not never so then Dave was like well I'm kinda hungover can you start putting stuff in bags so we didn't even have moving boxes Ron we had br uh, plastic bags just put all his shit in and then we filled up maybe 40 plastic bags Garbage bags, yeah, and they're easy to move. You just put them in a, a sack over your shoulder. How are you going to get 40 garbage bags into an SUV? I don't know. I mean, Why don't you ever plan anything in your life? I thought I had it, and it dawned on me on that Sunday, all right, I'll take up Fred's offer. I don't know why he would be so... He's sleeping. It's 9.30. He yes, don't call my house at 9.30 in the morning. I wouldn't. I will fucking lay you out. I wouldn't call your house, but I thought Fred's an early riser. But if somebody's offering you, here, I want you to take a truck, I want you to take a truck. You can't call him that day and say, I want the truck now. I didn't think I was going to need it until that day. So on, so that day, I decided, all right, I'll take him up on his offer. What is that? Yes, it's bad. It's really <laughs> rude. Don't you want you know, to, you don't get manners at all. Another thing was that Dave didn't really research where he was moving in Brooklyn, so he was living close to J Street, and Fred was on Avenue K, so Dave thought because J and Clay are next to each other in the alphabet, they were close, So I, had, but it wasn't, so I had to drive 40 minutes through Brooklyn to pick up this van, only to come all the way back to Queens to start over well, again. Who would make these crazy streets? J well, Street. Get a map. J Street, K Street. I mean, I was conv I thought the van would be only a block away. Did he do anything well? Did he do anything right about He did this? nothing. We packed. What we moved. About? The only thing he helped lift was the couch because it took four people to move. So basically, we were the moving company that worked for pizza. How's this new no apartment? It's gorgeous. Yeah? I don't want him to apartment. live there. Thank you. Yeah, it's, I have a very nice apartment, but I did a lot of... I, I put... How'd you get that new no apartment? I got it because uh, my chick was friends with the former tenants there. All right, so without her, you got nothing happening right now. That's true. This was your time to be the new married guy, the guy that's making things happen. Right. Moving day is guy day. Yeah, I, I thought I was doing a lot. I offered the guys, run. I got the guys pe three pizzas and some Cokes. I thought that's like a nice thing to do. You know what it costs you to move if you would have hired somebody? $4,000. All right, I didn't know it was that much. I tried to offer... Why uh, wouldn't you at least check to see what things cost before you do anything? It seems like you didn't look at a map. You didn't think about packing. It, it seems like you only thought about this the day of moving. Well, one of these guys had a map. Had a, uh, a map. He has a computer in his car. So he was going to do just do MapQuest while driving, and we were going to follow him. I thought that's a great plan, you know? 
But my thing was, I've always helped people move, and I don't have a problem with it, but... I do. I do not help people move anymore. I'm out of that. Those days are behind me. I just didn't realize how much, you know, it, it takes, how long it takes. It's so annoying, I mean, to move. Especially when you don't do anything, it All takes right, a long here's time. Here's our buddy Fred from Brooklyn. Hello, Fred. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Um, first off, Dave, you came from J Street, J-A-Y Street, I'm near Avenue K on the alphabetical side of Brooklyn, not on the street side where it's J Street. Uh, oh. Completely different end. But, Ron, the first weekend I have had no kids in years, years, I've been offering them for close to a month for box trucks, vans, anything I can offer them. They're moving to Brooklyn. Let me help them out. Even Friday night, they don't need anything. Everything is cool. They even said we have two pickup trucks. I said it might be raining. You sure you don't want a box truck? No, everything's cool. So everything's going great all weekend. I'm spending time out with the wife. I stay out late Friday. We're just a great weekend, kidless. And we stay out late Saturday night, and then 9:30 fucking Sunday morning, he's ready for the van. I'd be out of my mind. 9.30 Sunday, and, and th that was the first call. He said, Fred, would it be all right if I could use the van? He came over in a Toyota Corolla. I said, sure, no problem. He never calls me back. I had to call him back an hour and 15 minutes later and say, you want the fucking van or what? What, what are you doing? I, I got a day to prepare for here. So then Pitsy will meet me at my office at 12 to pick up the van. Pitsy shows up at 12.50. I, I, I'm, my, my day is half over. I'm in my shorts and a t-shirt here trying to give the guy a van. And because Pitsy showed up at 12.50, I had no assistance in cleaning out this work van. So I'm cleaning out soot. I'm cleaning out fucking dirt. I'm shoveling shit all by myself in the rain. And well, look, I, I, come I'm on, Dave. This is, this is I mean, really, seriously. One. But this is wrong. on your end and be responsible, Dave. Oh, all right, but the thing is, because he offered on Friday night, I thought, you know, I wasn't going to use Fred, but then he offers on Friday night, and I said, thanks, no, no, Fred, for the Dave, offer. I'll, I'll take you up Sunday. Dave, I've been no, you didn't month. say that. You said, no, no we're okay. Yeah. Then you called him Sunday morning. If you say okay on Friday, then he has time to get all this stuff together. Absolutely. You didn't do any of the general work. You didn't do any military planning that it takes to move. On that end, <clears throat> I fucked up. But I'll say this, I didn't want to put you out, Fred. That's why. And then when Pitts shows up in this Micro Machines vehicle that I couldn't believe, I had no idea. I, I then need, needed you, so I, Dave, uh, it was an emergency. Dave, when I offered and had time to prepare, you wouldn't have been putting me out at all. I got guys who would have cleaned the van, had it ready, ready to go, sitting there so Pitsy could just drive up and take it. Guys who but get it, paid to do this. Right, but I wasn't even you have a friend out there shoveling. But I, uh, on Sunday morning. I got you. I didn't want to even uh, make you do that on Friday. I don't even hear a thank you or I'm sorry. You're acting like you did everything you could and the guy got put out. No, I'm very thankful. I, I thank I'm him. not picking up on it. Are you fuzz? No, there's no gratitude here whatsoever. This is why... You know, it's one of those things where guys will hate to l help another guy move. This is where these problems start. And Be the thing that pissed me off was that Dave said, you see my apartment? Well, this is the last time you'll see it because you're never invited back. No, and after a, a fucking long day of oh. working in the rain, oh. I don't need to be fucking piled on top of lifting all your shit for you. Oh, I, we were busting balls. We were having fun. Stuff. I would have walked off the job, Pitsy. There was no way I would have stayed there as long as you did. I left. There were still even more trips to be made, and I told him that was it. Seven he, hours was enough for me. He did. Oh, he, he did leave early. early. Pitsy came over, returned the van, and just got the fuck out of there. And I even made a call afterwards. I said, Dave, is everything cool? Why don't you come take the ride back with Pitsy? Hits. Come over to my house. We'll have something to eat. You know what he says to me, Ron? What's that? Fred, why don't you come over here? We got a couple of pizzas. Oh, oh Jesus. I could not. Jesus no, Christ. I didn't, stop. I, I didn't stop moving till last night. I didn't stop unpacking till last night at midnight. Where's the attitude? Fred, I didn't say some. I, I didn't say thank you over the phone to you a couple times, and I didn't apologize. I'm not picking up a thank you. I don't recall. Oh, come on. All right, Fred. Come on now. Let's be fair. I will do this, Fez, uh, Fred. I will say thank you for the show, and I will say I apologize for the show, and I will say this. We owe you back. 
because uh, th- nobody owes me you know Listen, i i I'm, feel that way now ronnie if i'm offering something right let uh, do it on my terms i'm right. the one offering what, what 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 what's with you making the fucking terms on my van it's, right. it's on unbelievable morning. fine i apologize too late well, well casey was very grateful she's very fantastic. nice Dave, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. All right, Fred. We'll talk to you later, buddy. Thank you. Another problem is Dave lives like a, a eight year old boy, where shit is just thrown on top of each other, and more piles of garbage and garbage. So he doesn't fucking realize how much stuff he has. So that's why he didn't even know what a box truck was. If we got a box truck, we would have had one trip, and that would have been the end of it. It didn't make any sense. Why? Well, yeah, I didn't want to use a one box. trip. Doesn't make sense as opposed to how many trips, Pitsy? I personally made five trips. Back and forth. I thought that I was actually doing a disservice to Fred by having him order this quote unquote box truck. He owns that it. No one even knows what this thing is. You it's a moving truck. You ever see the size of a moving truck? Right, yeah. I thought those were just vans. I thought that's the same thing. They can no. A moving truck can be gigantic. They can move a house. In one trip. That was my mistake. My lack of comprehension of what a box truck is. And wait, that's one of your mistakes. Number one is not planning on where the place was at. How to get there. Thinking that will be left up to uh, everyone else. Number two, not packing. That was a problem. Number three, not even calling a mover to say, what does it cost for moving? Give me an idea of of how much money I'm saving here. Because I'm telling you right now. Pitsy did thousands of dollars of work for you. Between Pitsy and Fred, they did thousands of dollars of work for you. I, I, and and I, you were thinking of three pizzas and a couple of sodas. I want to take them out as well. And I did tell Pitts that. Take that them where? They're going to have. They're gonna be treated to a, a beautiful dinner in my apartment. And we're going to cook all day and night. What? Oh, that's to get a housewarming gift. That? Jesus. That is, that's a lot more personal. Enough. That, Take them out to dinner like a man. Buy them some drinks. I find that a lot more personal. Take them to Gordon Ramsay's. To me, it shows appreciation on my part that I'm willing to sit there and and cook them burgers By all day. Burgers or whatever steaks, Mister B. Come on, I mean, no, I'm fucking serious. You don't know. You got zero idea class. Ronnie, by the looks of his old apartment, it looks like the last person that cooked there was the guy that died in it. There was nothing. It was just piles of shit on top of shit. I don't cook. What do you live like an animal? I don't use the stove or the oven. I I, I didn't use. I used it once when I got in there. So what are we having? Fucking TV dinners at this party? No, 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 no. The new apartment. I'm gonna be cooking all over the. Pl- well, fine. I'll take you out to dinner. Whatever. I thought me myself cooking you guys steaks and potato salad. I mean, I didn't. I did nice. it because you're steaks my friend. Steaks and potato salad. If, if I'm if I'm doing it myself, isn't that more of a personal? No. Thank you. Fucking potato salad. That takes a long time. I'm serious. All right. If you got. I have a couple extra hundred dollars, and I'd gla- I'll gladly take you out to dinner. I just thought it was more of a nice thing. That's the lack of gratitude is what gets me on every little thing here. <laughs> the fact that he didn't have anything together yeah. is what gets me. That when you're doing a, a vacation, a move, the man is the guy who wants to sit down and go, all right, it's time to start and put these plans together. Well, you know, okay, I understand that. I don't have a The lot- fact that Pitsy does is why we've been pushing for Pitsy as his executive producer. Right. Well, I certainly wasn't going to be able to afford a moving company. I'm strapped with funds. In fact, Mr. B, you know, not to break your balls or anything, but you do owe me $50. For what? For the medieval times. Um, I didn't go where I went my spot. Yeah, I know, but I did. I gave you that invitation. So by just by giving you the invite, Wait, you have so, to give me fifty bucks because I got you a ticket. So right now, and I filled it with Earl, but I'm still paying. You have to do that, yeah, please. It's so it's fifty bucks for me not to go to medieval times. The, the ticket. This is the kind. <laughs> this is this is the kind of That's weekend not. I'm having. Earl, you didn't pick up this fifty on your own. Yeah, I accepted the ticket, but there was no. You begged it, me for it. It's like you know, like if I had, if I bought a ticket and I handed someone else the ticket, I'm not expecting them to to pay for the ticket. There, you I see your the point. The point is this: what Earl thought of it as a gift. Yeah. Well, it's not a gift. I mean, we you know we put our money in that thing, and when someone has to give us the 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 cash, I I thought it was Ron. Ron. I would have. You know what? I, I'll give it to Fred. Hmm. 
I don't think you have to do that. Because I'm going to take him out to dinner or cook him dinner. How many people are you taking out? No, you're not cooking anyone dinner. That ain't making up. Fine. How many people are you taking out? I'm going to take out four people to dinner on Friday night. Who are they? If they want to come. Pitts, Fred, uh, Magoo, and then uh, Wally. Those two guys helped us out. How did Wally get in the middle of everything that we do anymore? <laughs> Wally, I'm not saying who I saw him score with over the weekend. He's doing great for himself. Yeah. Everything is Wally anymore. He's the my, new... My chick is crazy about Wally. She's he... like, you know who I love? Wally. You know who's great fun? Like, Wally's great fun? Wally should be leaving with hot chicks? How's this happening? He's definitely the new face in uh, Pal Talk. Uh, Sheepy, you know, was a, a face yes, for a news. while. Yeah, but it's it's all about Wally. He's First of all, he smells terrific. I mean, we were moving, sweating our asses off, moving shit up four flights of stairs, and he still smelled like, you know, beautiful rustic cologne. It was awesome. I actually had to say to my chick uh, one time, don't bring up fucking Wally's name to me again. Yeah. I'm starting to get a little fucking, you know, yes. starting to hear the footsteps. I, I could definitely understand that. Yeah, I know he talks to my chick a lot, too. I know. The chicks love him. Mm -hmm. And why? What is he doing? Wally just sounds like a fun name. If you're a guy named Wally, you sound like you're going to be fun. I don't see him being overly fun. I see him being laid back. He is. He's extremely mellow. You never know when he's in and out. He's just... I never hear him speak out, but I guess he whispers to the women. I think, you know, he's kind of... You know who else is, is uh, mellow is Jack Nicholson. And I think Wally right. does that type of vibe. Uh, I got Snogan... Uh, what, you get something I was going to say, Wally has the big back tattoo, too. I think that's why chicks What's love him. What's on his back? It's a huge mosaic of Spanish things, I think, and it's amazing. Oh, I don't think my chick saw his back tattoo. Also, he's Egyptian, you racist. You are a fucking racist. Where are you going to go? Uh, where do you want this dinner to be? Somewhere nice? Oh, yeah, I'm fucking charging it up. Yeah. You Make sure you get plenty of cocktails, too. No, I, and I'm not trying to joke around. In all seriousness, you would rather go out to dinner or you would rather have me personally slave over food for you and Fred. I'd rather go out because I wind up cooking anyway. So I would rather go out. Hmm. You are a chef. Yeah. Uh, here's uh, Mike. Mike, you're on Ron Fez. Ron, give him the $50 for dinner, but then take back that free wedding ring you got him. Okay. All right, well, there's Radio Shark again. I don't know. By the way, uh, Radio Shark almost got punched by Bronx Johnny the other night. Really? Yeah. Bronx Johnny was furious. Uh, he was cock blocking him all night. All right, here he is, the man that the chicks love. It's Wally. Wally. Hey, hey what's going on, Ronnie? What do you say, brother? How you doing? I actually, I'm calling to defend Dave on his moving day. Of course um, you are. You're always going the other direction. That's why the chicks <laughs> love you. <laughs> well, actually, for the first time moving, um, I, you got to give him an excuse. You know, not to be ready. At age 29, he doesn't get any excuses. They, I, it's the first time I did it by myself. Thank you, Wally. You're right. My my dad it. did it last time for me. But technically, um, it, it would have helped a lot if everything was packed, especially that he lives on the fourth floor with no elevator. Holy so shit. And help. <laughs> if you imagine this, Fez, you're taking fucking chairs and, and tables and couches up four flights. There is no way. I would have had to say no right from the start. There is... You know what? I wouldn't have the nerve to ask any friend to help me move from four stories up with no elevator. I would be too embarrassed to even ask, please come help me move these boxes and chairs. Uh, in his defense again... They didn't. He didn't ask me to help at all. I offered to help, and neither did Casey. I I insisted on being. There's there. something about they you, Wally. Ask. I do not trust you. You've worked your way into every woman's heart, and there's something. And I saw the chick you left with the other night. <laughs> something is happening there. Something about Wally that we just cannot figure out. He's I a smooth operator. He's a smooth operator. Well, Charday is what I'm going to start and call him. Charisma. Yeah. And maybe somewhat of an Egyptian James Dean. You know, he wears leather. He talks quietly. People know he can uh, carry right. a punch, though. He carried my dresser by himself. I was flabbergasted. What were you doing? Playing video games in the <laughs> fucking corner? I was going for a ride in one of the drawers. Uh, sadly, I was actually trying to hook up the DVD player while that was going on. You don't... Oh. Uh, Dave... 
Dave was busy upstairs trying to hook up the TV to the cable, which he doesn't have yet. That's not coming in until the thought, middle of this week. He had to open okay. all the bags to find an extension cord to hook up a TV I'm that so didn't work. I'm so fucking infuriated with you. <laughs> and I even I'm part, you're not getting a 50. Hold on. Now no, you're not getting 50. I need that 50. No, that's a $50 Wait, penalty. Uh, Mr. B. In my defense, I noticed that they had a cable still there. So I thought, what better to do than to take the television, try and play it into the cable, and maybe put the ball game on for the boys while they're we're moving. moving. I know, but it's just nice background, that, you know? That is lazy work so you can get out of carrying the heavy stuff. It totally. Is, it's the creepiest thing in the world to do to your friends. And then Dave yelled at me when I went to unplug the TV the first time to move it. He said, we're watching the game. I said, Dave, we're fucking moving your shit. We're not watching the game here. I want it on the background. I'm, I'm seriously frustrated with you. You know what? It's I'm seriously frustrated. I in think the end, in the end, I just got to say, I mean, it's it was a long day. It was raining all day. Everybody busted their ass. Dave worked his ass off. And it's his stuff! <laughs> I know, why shouldn't he? <laughs> He's compassionate, yeah, Wally. It was a pleasure helping him, Thank and uh, I hope he doesn't move again anytime soon. Wally, Friday night. Steaks and All potato right. salad on me. Just, I'll be there. All right, Thank talk you. to you later, Wally. All right, bye. I'm telling you, Wally, I don't know what his game is. I don't know what his game is. But he has gotten himself into everybody's heart. I mean, you think a guy like him... Look how quick he's become an A-lister. And guys like Hosp are still pecking along at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> how does that happen? I don't know. Um, can I say this, too? Mm -hmm. And I, I hate to say it, but Wally almost, to me, he's like the new Bobby Pantera. Remember when Bobby had yeah. used to have that same thing? Yeah. And I think Wally now can work his way through the Ron Fez girls. Dave, Dave, you're on Ron Fez. Yeah, where was uh, Casey's buddy Jonathan on the move? I don't know, sir. That's an interesting Dave, question. Dave, you're a doofus. Okay. He'll only be around to help remove the panty drawer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my uh, work here is done. Uh, here it is, Eleanor Rigby, HDJ. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into the jukebox stuff. But first, I do want to apologize to Fez for Saturday night at Medieval Times. I was a little bit overstimulated by everything going on. You were very and excited and yelling? Loud. Yeah. I just, I never saw that side of her where she's just screaming. And it doesn't matter if they brought... She wanted the yellow night to win. Who uh, You know, it's like being at a ball game. If they brought out cake, she would just start screaming cake and get into this this rhythm and keep repeating whatever she was screaming out. Wow, so that, you seem like you don't even like her. I like her. I was just shocked at the behavior. I just, I just thought of her as a different kind of partier. So I was like a five-year-old at a carnival. I was, give me this, give me that. If someone bought something, I had to have three of them. I was out of control. <laughs> I thought you were great. I am so glad I did not go to this. <laughs> I am so I glad that Earl it. took on the $50 responsibility. I didn't take on the $50 responsibility. Well, you, you went, you ate, you enjoyed the show. That's your fitty. Someone's giving me 50. <laughs> now, I don't know what type of little quick games you guys yeah. are playing between you, but I demand $50 <laughs> by the end of the week. Wow. <laughs> but, I, I, no, I mean, I think part of Medieval Times is to, you know, have those laser swords and do all that shit. Laser swords? Yeah, we all had, like, laser swords. They, they were, they looked like medieval swords, but if you pressed a button, they would be laser lights coming out of them. They were really cool. They're lasers, Fez? Yeah. The, uh, an actual laser. No, not laser like a laser beam is <laughs> Yes, shooting. that's what a laser is. Yes, it's a light-up sword. Okay, so... They looked like laser. They looked like laser swords. Whatever. Okay, what else? Since, since Dave wouldn't take my side on the Snoogans thing, even though he has no idea what's going on, I have yeah. no problem saying, Dave, when you invited everyone, did you make it clear to them that they were going to have to pay 50 bucks? Um, no, no. I didn't make that clear. But I've never been invited to anybody's birthday party where I heard there's an admission fee of $50. No, I didn't. And then I didn't even go. Well, you, I, you, the ticket was still bought for Ron Bennington, so I think that means you owe me fifty dollars. But that's just me. And, and, Cause, and cause I right did. Right now, I'm on my way to go help your wife unpack your new apartment, and to hear you say you're taking a side of some guy who sat down at our table and took sheepy's seat, I'm kind of, kind of hurt. No, wow, no. good well, point. All right, now hold on. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to do that today, and as soon as Ron. 
told me what Snugan said to you, I reversed my decision. HTT, please. Oh, good. Okay. I reversed it real quick. I didn't know that Snugan's was so salty towards you. I don't know him, and I don't know him at all. When he sat down at the table, it's not like he was just joining some good friends. I've never even met him. Good. Now, please make sure that my DVDs are on one side of the room and my <laughs> CDs are on the other, okay? Just organize it very well. I'll take very good care of your stuff, Dave. And, and I, I, honestly, I don't even understand it. You're I not know, getting I... the 50. Why is this? <laughs> You're not getting the 50. No, I'm just saying, if he's going to help out. I'm going to tell you. You're not getting the 50. Come on, Mr. B. I <laughs> yeah. need that money. Turn the car around, HTG. We're and then turn the it. beat around. <laughs> 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 now, do you want to still go with HTG or Eleanor Rigby? Better nickname for you. Wait, you were singing Eleanor Rigby. Hmm. And when they turned it off, I remember you saying, no, why would you turn that off? Oh, were you drunk and yelling for cake? <laughs> <laughs> oh, were you drunk. Seriously, way to, ser you did the right thing. You let me tap in and take over as Jukebox Hero. Oh, well, I'm, I'm really appreciate you taking over for me. You saved my ass. All right, darling. All right, bye, guys. Bye, bye. Bye, Allie. Oh. Don't forget my sock drawer. Hey, you're being a wise ass. No, I'm seriously. just seriously. Okay, you're seriously being a wise ass. She's great, though. Thank you for helping out. Here's the weird thing: How come Fez and I can move up here from Florida and not need help? You guys have, well, you have probably more members in your family that pitched I, in. And believe me when I tell you, we weren't even close to that place. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I put out the cash. <laughs> to me, it's worth the cash not to be having the day that you had. I know, but... And I, let alone to do that to your friends. Well, I only have so much money. I had to pay the, the, the first month's uh, rent is due tomorrow. Well, also, oh. he just left the old place in shambles and said, fuck Frank, he could take the security deposit. Yeah. So he didn't even clean up where well, he could have got money. I, I have my bed. There's cigarettes all over the place, even though it was a non-smoking apartment. Um, the refrigerator, I didn't clear out some of the things like jelly and uh, macaroni and cheese. There's stuff all over the place. You're very mature on all this. Well, they put me through hell for a long time, so you know what? I just got Frank back. Face. Maybe for the kind of uh, reasons that you left the place in. And Rod, the tub that had a leak is still dripping and still leaking now. You're a mess, David. I hope that whole place overflows. Uh, Earl, uh, Dave, you've been having a rough, rough uh, weekend here. Yeah. And you said basically it takes... Uh, your friends to pull you out of this. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I feel like I'm in a bit of a tailspin. Sure, you and Casey feel like you're a little in over your heads. Yes. Here's Casey on right now. How are you, darling? Oh, boy. oh hello. Ooh. Hi, baby. Oh, hi, sweetie. I'm calling just to say that, uh, yeah, Debbie and Mike are coming over, not to help us unpack, but to, uh, I don't, I'm not, I don't have a great eye for things like she does, so she's coming over to help me get stuff to store things in. We're going over to Target. See? And uh, gonna get some shelves and things. What do you mean, see? see? <laughs> what do you mean, see? Like, see? she's letting you down. No, no, no. In fact, I think she's presenting it logically. She's saying another pair of eyes helps out two people who are in the middle of this chaos. And then you need ba chaos of what? Moving? And yeah. you need a backs and legs and trucks and. Right, yeah, and then we need, yeah, further assistance. Yeah, we need about four or five people who are no, objectively see, that's, seen. That's, that's, that's wrong. We really mm. don't. I think you've completely embarrassed us today. I feel terrible. Um, we're not the greatest organizers. That's definitely true. But you're not helpless. No, I'm not helpless. No, she's not. I've gotten not. a lot done today all on my own. Thanks. But but you're acting like Casey can't pull this thing together. Oh, God, no. And she needs other people's help. Didn't you pick up on that, Fez? Oh, yeah. It sounds like Casey's an infant, and oh. uh, she needs, like... <gasps> and a retarded infant. Whoa, oh, good whoa, point. I good point never... there. All right, baby. I didn't Say infer... baby. I didn't infer any of that. But why call her baby? S she's an adult. Girl, uh, sweetheart, whatever. You want it's... the girl. It's a nickname that, uh, it's a cuddly nickname. Now, last time you said you had your mom and dad do it for you. Yeah, my mom and dad and, and my brothers. And so yeah, I they've was... Been, they've been calling all day offering to help, too. But I, I, you know, kindly told them that we're adults and we can do this. It's, and you know what? It's time you became the, the alpha male. You're the dad now, Dave. I, You're not watching TV right. while other people are moving. I understand that. What, no, see, what I'm trying to say is that other people need to help... 
in order for things to get done. How am I supposed to lift the couch up four flights of stairs? And I want to also say she's been remarkable. I'm not, I'm ta- I'm not talking. I'm talking about myself. I'm saying I can't even think of a way to clean this apartment without other people. I know she's great. I know she's f- she's your other person. Yeah, but she. I don't want to put all it all on her. So that's why I thought maybe an HTG or a Mikaka could help out and pitch well, in and take some. See, trash we're out. extremely lucky that we have these people in our lives, like Wally and Magoo and Pitch, to help us I out. Know. And HTG and Mike. So you know they've been really kind to help us to make it go efficiently. It's definitely been way more efficient, and we will take them out to dinner. I will not cook for them because I wouldn't subject them to my terrible cooking. I agree. I, I cannot thank these people enough. I don't know what's going on. And Fez and I would love to come. Oh, we would oh, love to you. come. We would okay, love you're to. You're more than welcome to come. Thank you. You can come, Ron, if you give me $50. Fez oh, is, free Fez <laughs> is free of charge. Fez is free of charge. Fez is free of charge. And I want to make this absolutely clear. My yeah. Casey's doing an incredible job. It's me that I'm talking I'm not, about. I'm not hearing that, though. Uh, Fezzy, would you be okay for you to eat with HTG? Because I know you said you were pretty grossed out with her screaming the other night. As long as the drinks are kept to a minimum there. So you think she's a drunk alcoholic? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and a loud drunk alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised at how loud she gets. I will not side with Fez. I thought she was... I was speaking to her very, very easily. I've only known her to be loud. I don't know her, any other side to her. Yeah. I know I mean, she can't uh, rock the jukebox. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, there were times where during the, uh, after the medieval times. Here, I, I want you to focus on something. Okay. All this time and all the crazy things that you've done, Dave, yeah. I've never seen Casey feel like she needed to call and say, here's, wait, let me straighten this out. Just so you know, because this is your home... Yeah. You kind of embarrassed you and Casey talking the way you were talking I today. I, I don't. Th- I th- what I'm not. Tr- I'm trying to shed. Th- you said you can't do things on your own. <laughs> I didn't say and that. And that makes Casey call. No, I said I'm trying to shed some light on the movie. And then you experience. said burgers and potato salad. Again, I feel like that's more from the heart than I'm going to take you out and let another chef feed you. I feel like good if, food. Uh, well, that's your opinion, Ron, but you never ate my potato salad. But if I make it from with my hands, I feel like that's more oh, personal. Oh, that just got to me. I feel like that's a hell of a lot more intimate and, you know, appreciative. All right, Casey, thanks for calling, darling. Thank okay, you. thank you to everybody who helped us out. All right, bye. Thank you. Bye. And I, I believe I thanked people. You're in a little bit Dutch with your wife. I mean, she didn't even call in on the shit-eating day. Right, I don't know why. You know, you might be in Dutch when you get home. I don't understand what I said. I, I said that I need people to help me do things. I didn't. I wasn't you don't want to say that when you become a married couple. I need you to come over here and do something for me. Doesn't sound like people that are ready to be married. And that your chick has to call embarrassed for that. Now, that table, my kitchen table, is probably 500 pounds. Yeah. So I'm not supposed to say I needed Wally's help there? Remember? No. You were saying, I need you you guys to come over and help me out, blah, blah, blah. But I need people to help me is not what an adult says. Remember the other night when we all left to Fez when he says to you, how are you going to get me to medieval times? (laughs) The second that you give away... Your thing to someone else. Right. You looked in that. You look inept. All right. These are life lessons that yeah. I'm willing to heed. You know, but I, I didn't, I didn't see it that way. All right, Ron Fisher. What else is happening? I got uh, one of my pal talk spies told me the street that uh, Dave lives on. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Just absolutely beautiful. I was told. Guess he's doing all right for himself. Well, you know, he's got that friend. In case he has a friend. You finally start unpacking, you prick? Uh, yes, I have. Actually, it's the greenest street in Brooklyn. What's that mean? My street is the greenest street. It's advertised all over. It's the one. It's the number one greenest street. What most, are you saying? Most trees? Most yards? What? Most trees and uh, shrubbery. Yeah, most trees and shrubs in the entire Take borough. a picture of your block for me. I will. Because I don't see me schlepping all over the way to Brooklyn. Okay, you know, um, I just, a uh, couple blocks from me, I've said this before, Heath Ledger, and I found out one of the guys from the state, the redhead from the state, is uh, my next door neighbor. So what? The state? <laughs> what fucking year is this? When was that even out? 2000? <laughs> Maybe even like 96. 
Yeah, we can't brag about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good comedy show. And I have Paul Giamatti, who lives two blocks, so... What does that mean? Woody Allen lives in my neighborhood. He has a nicer house than me. <laughs> Donald Trump lives close to me. It doesn't mean anything. I think it just shows if I can it's live... It's New York. You only live a couple miles from anyone who lives in New York. <laughs> well, no, but these people are now my peers. They're Don't not you your peers. They're not what? coming over to your house, and you're not going to theirs. They are my geographical peers. Right, I live but with... I'm sad. Do you see me bragging about Woody Allen? I would if you if I were you. I would say I'm Ron Bennington, peers, geographical peers with Woody Allen. I think that would be totally. Why bother? He has a townhouse. Well, it makes you look better. I mean, not that to you who? need it, but I certainly could. You use don't it. need that. I do. Pay attention to your own life, not Paul Giamatti's. <laughs> I love that guy. You Why know? <laughs> he played Stern's boss? Why is that a big deal? <laughs> you didn't like Sideways. <laughs> Or that has nothing to do with you. That's what I'm saying. Well, it, it, it means that he, we have the same tastes and things at the very least. You do not. He's got a townhouse. He had a choice in where he went. You really pretty much had to take what you could get. But he has all this talent. He chose to live a block away from me. I think that says something about my character as well as his. It does not. Yours is Casey had a friend who uh, took care of her with a nice deal. Yeah, but everything That's what you should brag about. My chick knows somebody with a nice pad. I think everything happens for a reason. So why are you afraid to ask her for a soda? Because it sounds rude. It sounds rude to say, hey, where'd you get that Coke? I like to have one. I got money. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It just seems like uh, I'm. It's a you know worthless confrontation, an unnecessary confrontation. You know what's going to happen to you, my friend? What? You're going to inherit the earth, <laughs> you meek fucking fem. <laughs> and all the sodas that yeah. are left over. Yeah, and then not know how to make your own. You'll just have it for a couple of weeks, <laughs> and then we're out of stuff. I don't know what to do. I'll be like that show Kids Town. We have to eat. Or like you said to Dave, how are you getting me to New Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> I was very embarrassed that night. It got me there. You can get things through whining, but again, you are not in charge of your own destiny. Right. You're somebody's aunt. Yeah, probably not the best way to handle that, but, you know, at that point... I felt that he wanted me to go so bad, that should also be part of his responsibility. Like him also getting the tickets and stuff. Tickets that still have not been paid for? You didn't pay him yet, Fez? Well, I thought I was a guest to a birthday party. Okay, I know that everyone's laughing and this and that, but Ron, you owe me 50, <laughs> Fez, you owe me 50, and Earl owes me 50. You know, I'm, then, I didn't uh, go. That's all I'll say. Okay. Did I go? But the ticket was for you. We all know this, and, and I, I know you guys are trying to confuse me, and you're doing a good job of it. Someone staying home, the other one taking a spot. But basically, you guys owe me 100 bucks. How many tickets did you have? I had a ticket for you, a ticket for Fez, a ticket for Earl. Okay. You did not have a ticket for Earl. You had two tickets. Originally, I did. And Did you pay for it? Yes, and then we had to substitute someone else because he backed out for the rage thing. All right, so that person paid for the Earl's ticket. I have to look into that. Look into it. Because first of all, I've never been to a party, A, where there was a door charge. I never <laughs> walked up, oh, thanks for coming over to my house. That'll be 55. Two, Earl sat in my seat, right? Yes. He ate the food. He cheered for the yellow night. He owes you the fifty dollars. Fazio owes you the fifty and the ride over. Who had to pick him up? Uh, we did. Casey and I picked him up. Fezzy, please. What? Casey, you don't want to do that. <laughs> it was on the way. No gas was. Uh, no gas money was. Believe me, I took that prick over to HDGs. I uh, never saw anything from him. And Fez, um, he he was far out of the way. Earl. We were on 57th and 7th. Yeah. He made us drop him, him off at 53rd and 7th, Ron. Why? When we got out of the tunnel the second time, we just happened to be on 57th and 7th because we thought that's where Earl needed to go. He goes, well, I'm actually going to 53rd and 7th. So could you remember that our bridge is on 57th, so we had to go it four fucking on, blocks. It's on 59th. So people talk about me being in great. I haven't seen 50 bucks yet from Earl or Ron or Fe uh, Fe There's no doubt. Fez owes you 50 bucks yeah. plus gas money. Earl, you owe 50 bucks 
plus gas money. Can I at least see 25 from you? I don't know. You're not going to see anything from me. Come on. No. You know what you can do? Enjoy the life I've given you. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the fact that I pulled you out of that once a month thing where you told me you had a shift yeah. in Jersey and you still don't have an air check to this day. I should play your old air checks how terrible you were. I have them. You, you just sounded like my mom's email. Everything. I get. Did you thank Ron for pulling you out? That's <laughs> See, that's why I love your mother. <laughs> All right, now let's go back because not only is Fez a burden on people, but so are you. Why? Uh, what you did to my good friend Fred for Brooklyn, right? Okay. And I told him, I wrote back to him yesterday that he's going that you're gonna take him out to dinner. Yeah. And this is what he writes back. Uh, and I go, make sure I said, uh, make sure you get a dinner and then crush the check. I told him. <laughs> oh, I really, I want him to eat like a uh, maniac. He writes back to me. I plan to. Thanks, man. But let me ask you. Am I the third wheel with him and Casey? I mean, my wife was terribly inconvenienced, too. <laughs> what? It's not his wife's man! It's not his and wife's man! It's not the both of them, and you took her Sunday when the two of them were planning to be together while he's got to wait around for you to come by begging for a fucking van. 45 minutes to take some two-by-fours and a Brother, vacuum cleaner out of a van. That's all he did. And he had to clean it out and wait there for Pitsy and then wait for Pitsy to take it back. They had uh, plans. They were going to the Brooklyn Zoo. They were going to make a lot of things happen that day. It, it, it's not the wife has nothing to cheap do fuck. with the construction business. You're a cheap fuck and a burden uh, on your friends. Fred brings up a great point here. Yeah. You, you have to take the wife. All right, let Why? me say this. You do. It's the right thing. Because you're, you're a cheap fuck and burden on your friends. Fezzy, you're a cheap fuck and a burden on your friends. What? Earl, I'll just say you're Earl. And we all <laughs> know that. For them, I have to point out what they're doing wrong. But you are consistently being Earl. And Fezzy, you better be careful because you're turning into Stalker Patty. Where I need someone to pick me up and make sure I take a plate of food home with me. I am you not don't want to be that. I am not Stalker Patty. You are. Yeah, my dad used to give me chicken livers and not how I am. It is how you are at this time. This is what you're going to talk about when you get together with your shrink. Life coach. Same thing. In a stalker patty like move, mm. I, I noticed Fez took his gigantic middle evil, uh, middle, medieval times goblet out uh, with him. A goblet that cost probably four ninety nine. dollars Yeah. I don't know what he was planning to do. Put it on his souvenir rack. I think you're supposed to keep the glasses that you buy. What are you going to do with it? It was disgusting. It was sticky with that maiden's kiss juice all over it. Oh. What would you want from the... Why would you want that? Nice souvenir of the night. <laughs> but Fred for Brooklyn has a point. He wasn't asking for anything in return. He was just asking for a little respect or at least cooperation on getting his truck. Okay, look, I love Fred and all, all this stuff, and yeah. he's, he's a friend of mine, so I feel like I can talk like this, about him like this, but he asked me as recent as Friday night at the VIP if and I could borrow And you said no, and then you woke him up Sunday morning and said, I'm taking up your whole Sunday. So instead of having his workers clear out the van, he had to go out and do it himself. That's a bad thing. Because I didn't want to put him out of his way, and then Pitsy comes over in a fucking matchbox that could carry Again, a box of sneakers. Your thing is, it's everybody else. It's your fucking responsibility. I, this is your life, your stuff. Well, all right, I'll take him. You're supposed to pack. You're supposed to be fucking prepared. You're the general of this, and you act like a child. I. And it's caused all this infighting that may. And I'm going to say this, between that and this $50, this may break up the Ron and Fez show. No, please, please. And just let me also no. say this. The Ron and Fez show right now is on the bubble. What? We are as, we are as stable as ronfez.net. That's oh, how... That's brutal. Yeah. I'm so disgusted with you right now. Well, I will make it up. You broke up the show. I am not. Let's pull together. Earl, what time's your food getting here? Straight up three? Uh, no. It's, uh... Some of it's already here. It is already here. What just the fuck in. is wrong with you? I got. I never. When they were making the order, I never told them that we needed to have it by three o'clock. That was my fault. So it's been sitting here how long? Um, about five minutes. Now, when I ordered, did I tell you I want this straight up three o'clock? I don't want like old food. Uh, I believe you did. Yes. 
Did I tell you, Fez? Make sure we get this at three. Yes, I can see. Did I say to you three o'clock? What I heard from Earl was call now so it gets here early. Did they deliver it? No, Pepper went all the way uptown to get. What it. are you a fucking maniac, fan, uh, Earl? Yeah, I, I screwed that up. What 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 the lunch cost you? Um, I don't even have the receipt on me. It was a buck fifteen. A buck fifteen <laughs> for old cold food. <laughs> we can't eat in here. This ain't our studio. I'd fucking start eating it down now. Maybe we can give the sandwiches to the office here, and then we can reorder. Sandwiches? Or whatever he ordered. What the ordered. fuck are you talking about? We're getting soul food, right? Yeah, we got soul food. We didn't order sandwiches. We're getting old food. I want to sleep all night in your soul kitchen. That's where I'm fucking going with this. All right? I'm going to eat like Morrison. Yes, understand. What is crazy about... You ever been to a fucking restaurant, and you said, bring me my food an hour and a half before I'm ready to eat, and think it's going to be any good? No, I never done that. You're a crazy bastard, Earl. This should have been a fabulous day where we all go, "Thank you, Earl." Instead, we're going to go. I think this is turned. <laughs> Taste this. I believe it's turned. Do these greens still smell good to you? What'd you order? I ordered fried chicken and collard greens. Doing a great job on the heart, ain't you? Well, <laughs> you prick. You know what? And I heard so many stories about you. First of all, I caught because we don't eat the great lunches anymore. Since Fez put on us, oh, I've got to eat healthy. I'm going to be a vegan. Then I caught him with a giant muffin. And then Sheepy told me that you're drinking some kind of super fruit drinks. You got no fear of the next heart attack at all? Um, I have a fear of it. I don't think you do. But I think the meds have somehow braved you up. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Yeah. But it looked good and it felt like a special occasion, so I was going to indulge. Seems like you find a special <laughs> uh, occasion every time the show's not around. We've had a lot of special occasions lately. You're a prick. July in particular, <laughs> a lot of birthdays. It must have been a real special occasion because Fez asked me if I was going to finish my cake. Are you serious? Yeah, he took it. He took my the, the second half of my cake. Fez, if it's such a special occasion, why don't you throw him the 50 and the gas money? <laughs> when, I was invite prick. when I was invited to this evening, no one ever said, hey, we're all going to Medieval Times. It's 50 bucks if you'd like to go. No one also said to you, there'll be pickup service to this party. How many times are you invited to a party and, and then <laughs> you think to yourself, and the person's got to get me there? <laughs> that does not happen in the United States of America. <laughs> If you're going to a wedding, right? Right. But it's in Jamaica. They're supposed to fly you? No, you're supposed to fly yourself. Thank you. You see what I deal with, right, Nico? I'm doing everything I can. I'm sending them to the witch doctor today at three. <laughs> Life coach. I uh, Hopefully, they're going to put a nail into his skull and relieve some of the tension on his brain. <laughs> Just... They're not letting out steam today. Oh, where is it sitting? At room temperature right now? Yeah, it's uh, in you the office. It's in the office. I got banana pudding in there. How good's banana pudding going to taste a fucking hour and a half from now? Uh, not very good. I'd have fucking make you stand against the wall and squirt you with a big fire hose. That wouldn't be. That's the picture on the menu. <laughs> Alabama's ass. <laughs> we are not. We can't reach Pepper, how was it up there? How was it uptown? Wasn't that bad. I haven't been there in a little while. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, make sure there's another package of what you pick up. Uh, Earl, here's an LQ. Run a fish show. Hey, can I say another happy birthday to our buddy Franklin? Happy birthday, Franklin. And happy birthday, Franklin, and thank you for the greatest gift, or one of the best gifts. His hot chick? <laughs> His uh, him and Dean and Cypher Films' is, uh, video of the wedding. Was yeah, nice. Three discs long is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It's unfucking believable. That's great. It's the best thing ever. He's the coolest. He is the best. And Dean. And Joe, who doesn't talk a lot. Dean talks, though. Yeah, Dean talks a lot. Uh, Dean's always got something to say. Joe don't talk much? Not a lot. They're the Brooklyn boys, though, Mr. B. Why don't you do this? Throw them in for the dinner with Fred and his wife. I would. Uh, they didn't help me move. And Fred's three kids. You really got to <laughs> take the family out. Yeah, you should. You got to have his wife with them. It's really bad form if you don't say it, like the wife isn't invited. She didn't help. Like Bri Bri says, if my wife is not invited, I won't be coming. Yeah. Yeah. If his wife's not welcome, he doesn't feel welcome. There's still a few boxes that need to be unpacked. If Fred wants to send his wife over for her to do some work, 
then she'll come to the dinner. But you if know you what? You're going to end up in a fucking battle with him. <laughs> you're asking like his wife, acting like his wife is a chambermaid. And Fred, don't take that kindly. No, I'm not saying that at all. You saying my wife is a chambermaid? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Well, you are. You're treating a little bit like a chambermaid. I'm saying Fred lent out his van, and I'm extremely, Casey and I are extremely appreciative of it. So that's why he gets to come to the dinner. His wife lent out nothing. Uh, here's Fred. Fred from Brooklyn. How are you, Freddy? Hey, what's up, guys? How you yeah, doing? Yeah, good. Nothing about statistics and nothing. About, and I know the only letters I write you are pretty much complaining about Dave. No, I, do, I love your emails. Thank you, sir. Um... He, he told me last week, he said, put on my calendar for the 10th that we're probably going out to dinner. And, and knowing how well he planned his move, I, I, I just want to know if Friday is still on or should I make some other plans? We're going out to dinner on Friday, uh, Dave? Absolutely. You didn't get a... Uh, I can't wait to get there. Uh, well, you weren't going to go there. What does that mean? I, no, it's just, it was for the people who helped me move. I did help you move. How? Making sure you got married, have a job. Oh, all right. You know, it's all part of it. <laughs> all right. Well, then you can go. <laughs> nice. Where are we uh, going? Yeah, Fred, you didn't you didn't get the invite yet? We're, we we have the whole place. The restaurants. Uh, uh, I haven't gotten anything. I'm surprised about that. I will tell it. To, I will call you off the air. Why can't we hear what the place is? We're going to a nice Japanese place right by For a what sushi. No. Ooh, I no. love sushi. What, a Jap Japanese steakhouse? Yeah, Japanese steakhouse. Beautiful Japanese cuisine. Where are you going? Aragados? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great, great... Benihana? No, this is an upscale place, can Mr. I, B. Can I tell you how beautiful it is? Yeah. You have to bring your own beer to the place because... Oh, fuck you. <laughs> what? I ain't brown bag in. I ain't a BYOB. You I... gotta be kidding me. Like it's... you're going to the firehouse. Wait a second, wait a second. It's BYOB. What's the big deal with that? Because... Why don't you bring the beer for everybody since this is a thank you? I, I was to get them dinner. I didn't oh, say dinner and drinks. No beverages. Right, I I don't, don't, that's not dinner then. I Fred, it's off. Crazy. I don't want to sit at my dinner crazy. table with a keg right next to it that I have to pull for everybody to fucking in, pass around drinks. Bring a party keg like a woman. <laughs> in my defense, I have to bring <laughs> In your defense, you ain't shit. <laughs> Fred, his wife, Sergeant Magoo, and Wally. These people can fucking drink the Wally. Arctic Ocean dry. Fred, you better watch out if Wally's coming. I don't coming. drink at all. I, don't I agree all. with you there. Keep your wife on the other side of the table away from Wally, Fred. And, uh... Oh, yeah? He's a I smooth talker. Wally. It yeah. was dinner, not dinner, and a million cocktails. That is dinner. People. Oh, come on. That's a celebration. Yeah. That's a thank you. I will bring... Whenever There's going to be six of us, Freddie. There's a problem, Dave. If it doesn't have a liquor license, it just passed the health test, for God's sake. That is true. That place, you're going to see cockroaches running in and out with, uh, with, with shit. There, listen. There's gonna be six of us there. I will bring a six pack of oh, Budweiser. Oh, oh, don't bother, oh, Budweiser. Fucker. Yeah. What Holy you you got shit. problem with Budweiser? And while he's bringing Sarah J, she's oh, gonna be in. Yeah. All right, seven. Dave forgets white shorts. Whoa. He forgets all the trips we made up and down those four. You bringing stairs. your chick? No, she can't come. You don't want her to come. Partially. Do me a favor, uh, Fred. Make sure everybody sparks up and they're starving by the time the food gets out there. Eat as much as you want. Yeah. I just couldn't have everyone drinking on my dime. Oh, look at Deb. If you break Dave's bank, you'll have to help him move yet again to a even cheaper apartment. Why can I ever have an argument with Sheepy or Dave without you running in like a mama hen and pecking me on the back? I, look at my back. It's just it's hen pecked. <laughs> Unbelievable! She looks out for me. You know when I look out, I'm gonna start and, and, and throw bees into her house. <laughs> what was that, Rushmore? I'm gonna send somebody over there and just fill her house up with bees. I know what you're afraid of. That'll keep her busy. All right, Fred, you're going Friday night, but yeah, uh, be thirsty. Fred, is your no wife? Way, your, your, is your wife coming, or can I? I want to well, save a little I, money. She she was put off that Saturday morning also. She was yeah. Have to come. Yeah, I would love to have her there. But technically, it was her, your van, right? Not hers. So if she, she wants she to was come... She in this company, and she was also... She, had, she was kidless that weekend, and she sacrificed the morning to be with her husband. I'm, and you called and interrupted the whole fucking thing. Okay, but I'm just saying, if she wants to come, maybe she can, you know, sweep the sidewalk in front of my apartment, Holy or shit. dust... You're a wise ass, seriously. Wow. Fred will fucking shoot you on the street. You can't sit around and do jokes about somebody's wife. Hey, since Vic was invited, can I take food home? for her, Dave? Yeah. Is that part of the thing? Of course you can. Bring me in a I plate. Didn't, I didn't invite Vic. Yeah. I, inv I invited Mr. B. You invited Vic Fez. Vega. <laughs> <laughs> toothpick Vic. Here you come. Well, How's Toothpick Vic doing?
What kind of Japanese restaurant doesn't even have sake? This yeah. is nice. I've never been in a fucking place that doesn't have sake. Doesn't have some Japanese beers. It's nice. It's got uh, benches. You yeah. don't even get real chairs. No. Not comfortable. How do you uh, serve the cat here? Is that uh, <laughs> grilled? All right, Fred, talk to you later.